Hello, dear students. I'm thrilled to guide you through the exciting process of installing Mikrotik CHR on virtual machines. And I can't wait for you to dive into this hands-on experience. I'm Emmanuel Corrals, and I'll be your instructor throughout this journey. The beauty of CHRO lies in the flexibility it offers by supporting various virtualization tools. We're going to demonstrate these on a KVM VPS, that's kernel-based virtual machine. But keep in mind that CHRO can also be installed on other platforms like VMware, Hyper-V, VirtualBox, and more. In a previous video, I demonstrated how to get yourself a lab using VMware and Oracle VirtualBox. If you chose to use any of those, you will have to download a CHRO disk image and mount it using the same method I outlined for other operating systems, as Mikrotik Router OS is basically an operating system too. So if that is what you consider more intuitive, you can simply head back to mikrotik.com, go to software, make sure you're on downloads, then scroll down to Cloud Hosted Router. Here you can see various disk images according to the available router OS versions from Mikrotik CHR. All you need to do is download your preferred version, and mount into the virtual machine that you have set up on your local computer. Well, since we'll be basing our demonstration on an actual VPS in a production environment, we'll skip this step. Now, you might be wondering, why go for a virtual private server, VPS, in the cloud, when I could just set up a local instance on my machine? That's a fantastic question. Let me break it down for you. Using a VPS in the cloud, like KVM, brings a set of advantages that can significantly enhance your learning experience. First and foremost, it provides a real-world environment that closely simulates what you would encounter in a production setting. You will get hands-on experience working with virtualization technologies that are widely used in the industry. Moreover, a cloud-based VPS allows you to access your Mikrotik CHR installation from anywhere with an internet connection. This means you are not bound to a specific physical location or machine, offering you the freedom to experiment and learn on the go. Also, Cloud-based solutions often come with scalable resources. This means you can easily adjust the computing power and storage of your VPS to meet the requirements of your CHR setup. It's like having your own virtual playground that adapts to your needs at all times. Now, let's get down to business. Before we jump into the Mikrotik CHR setup, let's make sure we have the perfect Linux VPS for the job. I highly recommend going for a VPS with KVM virtualization, as this approach won't work with OpenVZ virtualization. Now, you might be wondering, why KVM and not OpenVZ? Let me briefly explain. KVM, which stands for Kernel-Based Virtual Machine, provides better support for virtualizing various operating systems. It allows us to run Mikrotik CHR smoothly and efficiently on the VPS. On the other hand, OpenVZ virtualization, while excellent for many use cases, lack the necessary kernel modifications to accommodate CHRO specific requirements. So for today's demonstration, we'll be using the Ubuntu server 18.04 64-bit OS. Now, you can choose your VPS provider based on your preference, but I already have an active VPS from Trash.net. And as you can see, they offer KVM virtualization, which is just perfect for our setup. Feel free to pick any other provider as long as they support KVM. Now, let's talk about PuTTY, a nifty Windows tool that we'll need to connect to our VPS. PuTTY is a free open source terminal emulator that allows us to securely access our VPS through the SSH protocol. It provides a straightforward way to establish a connection and issue commands on our VPS. Of course, depending on your operating system, you may choose to use other SSH clients. They will still work. To download PuTTY, simply head over to the official website, PuTTY.org, as P -U -T -T -Y .org. Once you're there, you find the download section and you see various options. Look for the PuTTY installer link. Click on it and save the installer file to your computer and run it. Now with PuTTY downloaded and ready, let's dive into the action. You fire up PuTTY and you see a simple interface with a place to enter your server's IP address. Go ahead and enter the IP address of your VPS that you obtained from your provider. Just entered mine and click open. Now, as you make the connection for the first time, you might encounter a prompt warning you that the server's host key is not cached. Don't worry, this is a standard security feature. Just go ahead and click accept to accept the key and proceed. Next, you need to enter your username. In our case, we'll use root as the username since we want to access the server with administrative privileges. After typing root, you hit enter. Now the moment of truth. 
You'll be prompted to enter the password for your root user. Go ahead, type it in. Don't worry, the characters won't be visible for security reasons, and press enter. Once you hit enter, if everything went smoothly, you should be greeted with a welcome screen. Congratulations, we're in. Now we're all set to start issuing commands and proceed with the Mikrotik CHR setup. All right, let's continue with our Mikrotik CHR setup. We've reached a crucial step where we execute a single line of command to get things rolling. So let's break it down step by step. The command we'll be using is call-fssl repo.trash.net forward slash mikrotik forward slash chr forward slash install dot sh pipe sudo bash. Let me explain each part for you. Call. This is a powerful command line tool that allows us to transfer data to or from a server using various supported protocols such as HTTP and HTTPS. Now the dash FSSL, these are options passed to call. The dash F fails silently on server errors. Dash S, silent mode, which prevents progress and error messages from being displayed so we can keep a tidy terminal. The dash S shows error messages if an error occurs. And the dash L follows redirects if the server provides any. Now the HTTPS repo.trash.net forward slash mikrotik forward slash chr forward slash install dot sh. This is a URL pointing to the back script hosted on trash.net. The script will take care of the mikrotik chr installation process. Then pipe sudo bash. The pipe takes the output from the call command and passes it as input to sudo bash. The sudo command is used to run the following command with administrative privileges. And bash executes the downloaded script with the needed permissions. Now, here is an important note. If your fresh VPS doesn't have call installed, you might see an error at this point telling you that call is not found. But fret not, we can quickly resolve this. Just type in sudo apt update to refresh the package list and then pt install call y. You hit enter to install call on your VPS. I've also pasted the entire command as a resource in this video section. We give it a moment. Once call is installed, reissue the initial command. You can easily do this by arrowing up on the PT terminal. And this time, it should work smoothly without any errors. Now we see that running. You give it some time. Great job. At this point, you should find yourself comfortably back in the terminal without encountering any errors. Now, we need to restart the virtual machine. It is important we ensure a proper restart of our virtual private server, or VPS. And we have to do this from the VPS hosting control panel, not the terminal. Why, you may ask. While restarting via the terminal is generally possible, it lacks the oversight and control provided by the hosting control panel. The control panel knows the VPS environment intimately and ensures that the proper sequence of actions is taken during the restart. By restarting through the control panel, we minimize the risk of potential complications and guarantee that our Mikrotik CHRO is up and running efficiently. It's all about taking the extra step to ensure a stable and reliable networking solution. So we simply type exit, to exit for the client, and head over to the hosting control panel. Locate the restart button and click on it. This could define looks and location depending on your VPS provider but the principle remains the same. Once the restart process is initiated, it's time to connect to our VPS over VNC, Virtual Network Computing. VNC allows us to view and interact with the VPS even when other connection means such as SSH might not be available. It's an excellent backup plan for situations like this. Now, as installation progresses, you see some processes going on. For advanced users curious about what's happening behind the scenes, you can view the bash script we executed earlier. In essence, the file system is being modified to accommodate the latest stable version of Mikrotik CHRO, which as of today is rather OS 6.49.11. Once the installation process is successfully completed, you'll be greeted with the Mikrotik login screen, eagerly awaiting your access to the fully functional cloud-hosted router. Now comes the exciting part, managing your router and unleashing its potential to optimize your network. We will explore this in the next video.